Hello. This video covers the silent data corruption topic. Let's cover the first part. What is data corruption? Data corruption refers to errors generated in computer data while it is being handled. All kinds of data related operations can result in corruption. Data corruption can either be detected or it remains undetected. So what kind of operations are performed on data in a computer? Data is read, written, computed, transmitted. When worked on data resides in the memory. And is processed by the CPU. It is permanently saved on disks and is expected to be always available when needed. Data could be in the form of a text file, a video, an audio, an image or kept in some proprietary format like databases. Alright, so what causes data corruption? There are many reasons for data corruption. I have highlighted some of the key ones, the one which I have come across in the past. Power failure or fluctuation, a very common cause of failure. Mitigate this issue with use of UPS for your home computer or for your data center. Disk failure or block corruption, a disk fails in total, you lose complete data. With block corruption being reported, you may have some breathing space but as soon as even a single block is reported as corrupt it is time to change the hard disk as soon as possible connected hardware failures there are multiple hardware components which are interconnected to perform work on the data there is hardware like random access memory network interface card host bus adapter you could have controllers there could be uh, cables even cables malfunction you could have cat6 cables you could have uh, fc fiber channel cables even, even ports can have issues sometimes, the connecting ports, the physical ports on your machine might have loose connection. So any, anything, any hardware could fail during its course of use and it could contribute to the data corruption. Ungraceful ejection or shutdown, if you are aborting a program while it's processing data or if uh, ejecting a, a USB drive while at while while an operation is happening on the desk it can all contribute to data corruption bad programming not easy to find out but code which was badly designed or is buggy could contribute to the data corruption usually it is recommended that the programs written on the system which handle data should have uh, adherence to acid acid property acid is a property of the transaction which sets the rules for ensuring reliability and integrity of data i have covered this topic in my blog 
you can also google for this firmware bug again difficult to identify firmware exists on the machine on individual hard disk drive on the nas on the san switches etc etc most of the smart devices will have firmware and there could be a code issue or a programming issue on the firmware which results in data corruption transmission interference this is more related to network there could be magnetic interference and that can result in data corruption aging hardware something which is of a low profile not many people focus on this not many shops focus on looking at aging hardware contributing to data loss there is a possibility that hardware has aged and the workload has increased gradually this could contribute to data corruption bad capacity planning risking threshold limits this is again from my experience there is a possibility that hardware was purchased about 5 years back and it was as per the capacity planning done at that point and they would have a certain amount of assumption in terms of identifying the growth of workload on that hardware it is possible that the the workload has increased more than the expected value and that could be putting a load and extra work on the hardware which can also contribute to unwanted data corruption now the last two points aging hardware and bad capacity planning i'm very sure a lot of folks would debate on this and would have good reasons to justify that no these two may not contribute to data corruption i have uh, a different opinion i'm talking from my experience and i have seen that if you if if the aging hardware is refreshed based on the increase in workload or every 5 to 7 years the chances of data corruption reduce for bad capacity planning if you have taken into consideration the growth factor of the company then yes it will sustain the hardware will sustain the increase but in case the capacity planning was not done well in the first place it is possible that you start seeing corruption after few months or few years of use of the hardware ensure that the, the capacity planning is done keeping in mind the growth factor of the company if your company is growing at let's say 20% per annum put in some buffer and plan the next hardware purchase accordingly most companies would plan for 4 to 5 years 4 years 5 years or 6 years range so you need to take into consideration the growth factor when you're buying a hardware or your hardware should be scalable so let's look at the the reason why i made this video what is silent data corruption silent data corruption or sdc is the undetected part of data corruption there is no indication that a corruption happened in any of the layers which is handling the data it is also possible that error was identified by automatic means but it fell under the radar of observation it is possible that it is logged somewhere but maybe there is a threshold limit which has been kept and the administrators 
were not able to identify it in time to fix it. It has also been known as non-malicious loss of data. So the intent is not malicious in nature. It happened because of some kind of software or hardware failure which contributed to the loss. So what is the impact? I believe this slide is not required because everyone knows what is the impact of loss of data. So I'll just breeze through it. It results in service downtime. It is loss of revenue. It impacts future decisions. It impacts audit and regulatory compliance. Most important, it can result in loss of customer trust. It can result in reputation loss for the business. So what fixes are available to resolve silent data corruption? This slide I put in the healing options which are automatically available on different hardware. There are more and more hardware has been added for error correction. I have listed what I have come across and these should be considered when you're buying new hardware to replace the old one. ECC CRC on hard disks. This is by default. It, all the new hard disks have it now. There's an error correction code which is running which takes care of any kind of corruption happening in real time. There's also a cyclic redundancy check. All these features are available on the hardware which will automatically take care of corruptions which have got detected on the hardware without any intervention from the administrator or any other program. RAID parity check if you have a RAID in use it can automatically heal corrupt blocks. ECC memory error correction code is now inbuilt into memory modules. So any data getting loaded in memory and being updated in memory would undergo a verification to prevent any kind of corruption. Error correction code on processor. IT name processors now come with ECC which allows for verification of blocks on L1 and L2 cache. Checksum enabled file system. Install file systems which have a mechanism to validate data when it is read and written to. There are file systems like ZFS which can perform this job in the background. Now let us look at the options which we can manually set to prevent data corruption. First and foremost, solid backup strategy. This is the most critical as well. Every organization must have a solid backup strategy. Even if your home computer data is important, ensure there's a backup strategy on that. Now, apart from having a periodic backup, ensure the archives are available for earlier backup dates. It will depend on the requirement, but ensure apart from the current backup which is running, the older backups are available for a certain period of time. You could have a strategy where you have daily backups available for the last week and then weekly backups available for last four weeks or last six weeks and then you have quarterly or yearly backups retained for some time. The idea is that your strategy should ensure that in case the silent file got backed up in the current backup and is not recoverable then you should be in a position to go back to an earlier backup and restore it. Data scrubbing, it's a technique used to heal data that is flawed or corrupted. Scrub will verify data block by block and try to rectify it. Wherever possible, it will rectify. Where not possible, it will throw a warning or an error depending on the, the type of corruption encountered. Scrub can be performed at database level or file system level. Again, ZFS is a very good example of a file system which allows this functionality. On personal computers, you can also use check disk, which will again scan through all the blocks and try to rectify whatever is possible and give out a report if there's a block corruption. Cloud drive or backup for endpoints. 
So if, if you have a lot of endpoints which carry around sensitive data, you can provide cloud drives on these machines and give users the option of copying the files to the cloud drive to ensure there's a backup available on the cloud. In case the endpoint fails, the backup can be restored from the cloud. The files are accessible on the cloud. Now your cloud service could either be a drive or a backup. If you have taken backup as a service, then it would probably give you an option to backup all data on an endpoint without intervention of the user and then allow selective restoration of files as and when required. Cloud Drive would show up as a file system drive and the option would be with the user to copy the files. Review and set the checksum parameters at database level. Now databases will have option to perform real-time verification of blocks when they are written to and read. There would be instance level parameters which administrators can set to enable this functionality. For instance in Oracle you have DB block checksum parameter which can be set to typical or full. On SQL there is a parameter called page verify that can be set to checksum. Whenever these parameters are set at database level, do a performance check just to ensure that the overhead is acceptable. SMART on hard disks. SMART stands for self-monitoring analysis and reporting tool. Most hard disk setups or SAN or NAS would provide you with the capability of monitoring the corruption hits. Make use of these tools. They perform real-time checks on the data being written to and read from the storage and report on any kind of incidences. Now fixes in, in terms of proactive action. Again, there are a few points which could be debatable. I'm putting these forward from my experience. I have learned over the years that these have actually helped me in reducing the corruption levels. Do an in-depth capacity planning. I mentioned in the previous slides also, capacity planning should be bang on target. If you are doubtful about the workload, put in an additional buffer, put in additional hardware resources. Extra is not an issue. A shortage would be an issue. Invest in hardware refresh every four to five years. When you do capacity planning, you would obviously do it for a certain amount of years. So it could be four to five years or it could be five to seven years. Whatever you had you have taken into consideration, as soon as that time period is due, please go ahead and refresh the hardware. Replace with what is the latest in the market, what is latest for the product you are investing on, and ensure that the same will again be usable for the next four to five years be on the latest software version have a strategy to update the software versions periodically and be on the latest release buy hardware with ecc crc feature enabled as i said most of the hardware are smart now they have error correction code inbuilt and any kind of corruption within the component can be dealt with in the same area without any involvement from the other components.